episode of the second season of Characterization with Shanli. I'm Shanli, a master's student of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering at Gaz University in Ankara, Turkey. It's truly a great pleasure to be back in front of the camera, sharing this journey with you once again. In this second season, I will be delving into the theoretical part of the X-ray fluorescence, XRF analysis together. Let's start with the question of what is XRF? XRF is a powerful analytical technique used to determine the chemical composition of wide range of materials. These materials may be in solid, liquid or powder and other physical forms. In addition to elemental analysis, XRF also can be employed to assess the thickness and composition of the layer and coating of the samples. This method is fast accurate and non-destructive, typically requiring a minimal sample preparation. Its wide range of applications spans various industries, including metal, cement, oil, polymers, plastics, and food production, also extensively used in mining, mineralogy, geology, pharmaceutical, and environmental analysis, specifically for waste management. Also, XRF serves as a important analytical tool in research and development across scientific and industrial fields. The spectrometer systems used in XRF analysis generally categorized into two main groups. The first one is energy dispersive XRF, EDXRF, and the second one is wavelength dispersive XRF, WDXRF. The choice of the spectrometer uh, crucially influence the range of detectable elements in our sample and also the sensitivity of our analysis. For example, EDXRF typically enables the detection of elements ranging from sodium to uranium. However, the WDXRF uh, offers an even broader range of elements from beryllium to uranium. But both of these methods uh, can detect levels from sub-PPM uh, up to 100%, generally elements with higher atomic numbers exhibit better uh, detection limit compared to the light elements in our samples. Here I want to continue with the working mechanism of XRF analysis. In XRF analysis, X-rays from a source, generally an X-ray tube or sometimes synchrotron or radioactive material directed these uh, X-rays onto our sample. So, let's consider this as our sample, which we want to analyze it by using XRF analyzing instrument. Here, we have incoming X-ray photos.
rays absorbed. Let's take a quick informative break to understand the difference between Compton and Rayleigh scattering. When X-rays hit a sample, not all of them produce characteristic radiation. Some are scattered instead, as we explained it before. Compton scattering occurs when an X-ray photon collides with a loosely bound or free electron. The photon transfers part of its energy to the electron and changes direction. As a result, the scattered photon has less energy than the original one. This is similar to a billiard ball striking another. After the collision, the first ball slows down while the second moves away with some of the energy. On the other hand, Rayleigh scattering happens when an X-ray photon interacts with a tightly bound electron. In this case, the electron stays in place but begins to oscillate at the same frequency as the incoming radiation. The atom then emits radiation at the same energy as the incoming X-ray. Since no energy is lost, this process is also called coherent scattering and it gives the appearance of simple reflection. In our second informative break, I want to explain the production of characteristic fluorescent radiation. In the classical atomic model, an atom consists of a nucleus with positively charged protons and the neutral neutrons surrounded by electrons in defined shells, the K shell, innermost one, followed by the L, M and outer shells. These shells can hold a specific number of electrons, 2 in K, 8 in L, and 18 in M, and may include subshells. The energy of each electron depends on its shell and the element. When high energy particles, like X-ray photons, strike an atom, they can eject an electron, creating a vacancy, often in the K shell leaving the atom in an unstable state. To regain stability, an electron from a higher shell like L fills a vacancy and excess energy is emitted as an X-ray photon. This emission, known as a characteristic X-ray, has an energy equal to the difference between the two shells. <laughs> 